Peace be upon you. God willing, wanted to continue on with the conversation in regards to uh, fasting and Ramadan. Uh, we're about 10 days into uh, Ramadan for 2015. And uh, last week we talked about uh, how to determine when Ramadan starts and when it ends by looking at the uh, phases of the moon. And um, this week God willing, wanted to talk about the spiritual benefits of fasting. And um, inshallah next week talk about the uh, physical benefits and then the following week talk about the uh, night of destiny. Um, one of the questions we didn't address in the last podcast is why do we fast? And the simple answer is we fast because God told us to do so. Now, God doesn't tell us to do something without it being for our own good. Um, and it's this absolute trust and understanding that everything good emanates from God. That God would never, you know, advocate us to do something that's going to be detrimental for ourselves. And in 2183, it says, O you who believe fasting is decreed for you as it was decreed for those before you, that you may attain salvation. And when God decreed fasting, as believers, as submitters, we have to say we hear and we obey. And uh, we understand that even though, you know, saying the years past, we might not understand the uh, scientific reasons behind it. Uh, we trust in God. And as uh, the science catches up, we realize that this is actually uh, probably one of the most beneficial things that a human being can do both spiritually and physically. And in 5.7 it reads, Remember God's blessings upon you and his covenant that he covenanted with you. You said we hear and we obey. You shall observe God. God is fully aware of the innermost thoughts. So inshallah, this week we're going to look at just some of the high-level items uh, of the benefits, the spiritual benefits of fasting. And the uh, very first one is just the absolute con continuous remembrance of God. Uh, because you think about it, how, you know, in your uh, typical day to day, when it's not Ramadan, when you're not fasting, you know, how often and how casually do you just open the fridge and grab a bite, uh, take a drink of water, you know, buy a soda, whatever? And uh, obviously, you know, we mention God's name when we uh, before we eat or drink, but uh, this is an opportunity that now throughout the entire day, not only do you have to remember not to eat or drink, uh, but every time that you have that sensation, that thought, uh, it's a chance to remember God. And when we remember God, we remember God's qualities, that God is most gracious, most merciful, uh, that, you know, God is uh, in control of everything, and it gives us peace of mind. And in 1328, it reads, they are the ones whose hearts rejoice in remembering God. Absolutely, by remembering God, the hearts rejoice. And this is the fundamental uh, uh, paradigm that we're trying to uh, achieve in submission is the continuous remembrance of God, that God is occupying our minds the majority of the day. And when we spend this entire month, uh, you know, fasting throughout the day, it's an opportunity to train our minds, train our bodies to always remember God and be appreciative of God. And God tells us in the Quran 62.10, it says, once the prayer is completed, you may spread through the land to seek God's bounties and to continue to remember God frequently that you may succeed. So by remembering God and remembering God's qualities, God's characteristics, uh, the names of God, you know, most gracious, most merciful, uh, all-powerful, all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, um, and really kind of letting those, uh, those attributes sink in, um, we're going to be successful. And in 3.191, it says, They remember God while standing, sitting, and on their sides, and they reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth, our Lord, you did not create all this in vain. Be you glorified. Save us from the retribution of hell. And the uh, remembrance of God is so important that God tells us that the purpose of the contact prayer uh, the, is to remember God. And in 2945, it says, You shall recite what is revealed to you from uh, of the scripture and observe the contact prayer salat. For the contact prayers prohibit evil and vice. But the remembrance of God through salat is the most important objective. God knows everything you do. So as opposed to, you know, obviously having set times throughout the day that we uh, remember God while we're doing the contact prayers, the Salat, uh, you know, fasting allows us to remember God uh, continuously throughout the entire day. Uh, it's a continuous reminder because it's something so primal in us, this urge to want to eat, to drink, uh, that we're curtailing to basically in place of we remember God. And in 2014, uh, it says, I am God, there's no other God beside me, you shall worship me alone, observe the contact prayer, Salat, to remember me. So you can think of Ramadan as just an extension of a, an entire month where we're continuously training our bodies, training our minds to remember God. And this breaks us out of this rut. You know, so often in life, we get into these uh, routines. Uh, the routine is, you know, you get up, 
you get ready, you brush your teeth, you eat breakfast, you know, you go to the uh, uh, your car, you drive to work, or you drive to school, you go through uh, work, and you head back home, and it's this continuous routine, and then all of a sudden, boom, you have this absolute shift in your day-to-day -day routine where you're cutting out, you know, your breakfast, your lunch, you're uh, not eating or drinking for the entire day, and it heightens the sense of uh, uh, awareness uh, of your day-to-day. You know, and it breaks it up to the point that you're conscientious of what you're doing, you know, how much energy you're exerting, um, you know, the, these times that normally you just fill with mundane activities of just, you know, uh, eating and drinking, uh, you're actually, you know, in tune with what's going on around you. Uh, and what's interesting is when you fast, you get this heightened sense of awareness, this heightened sense of smell, sensitivity, uh, acuteness to vision, to the point that, you know, they think evolutionary there's a reason for that because if we were in a uh, point of starvation, uh, our brain would have to become more fine-tuned to be able to go find uh, and identify and uh, be able to secure food. So when we do this, we actually become more conscientious throughout the day. And when we're more conscientious, we find more reasons to basically reflect on God and be appreciative of God. And that takes us to the next point, this aspect of appreciation. Um, you know, when habituation kicks in, basically all of a sudden... What used to be very uh, tantalizing to us, you know, something that would interest us, get us excited, all of a sudden it loses that ability, you know, and you think about that. Food is absolutely one of these items. When all of a sudden you can go to the grocery store and buy whatever you possibly want and create whatever dish you want, and if you don't want to create it, you can go to any restaurant and have chefs cook, you know, that, that gourmet meal for you, uh, it's very easy to become unappreciative. And just, it's, you know, to forget how much of a blessing it is to have this, uh, this luxury and this diversity of delicious foods and spices and drinks uh, that we can always consume at a moment's notice. Uh, and fasting allows us to become more appreciative because I guarantee that moment when you break your fast, food never tasted so good, you know. Water never felt so refreshing and so hydrating um, as that moment because you spent the entire day Cutting off uh, your, your body's desire for the most basic of necessities, food and water and drink, uh, so you can savor it at that moment. And that allows us to be appreciative. And God tells us in 14.7, it says, Your Lord has decreed, the more you thank me, the more I give you. But if you turn unappreciative, my retribution is severe. So when we fast, we become more appreciative. We become more appreciative of the blessings, the food, the provisions that God has given us, the convenience uh, to be able to go to a grocery store and pick any fruit or vegetable or meat we can possibly imagine. Um, and this appreciation allows God to give us more because with this heightened sense of a, a, a sensitivity to uh, the uh, the surroundings around us, the smells, the uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the foods. All of a sudden, we become more appreciative when we actually get to have it. And by being appreciative, God blesses us more. And in 3050, it says, You shall appreciate God's continuous mercy and how he revives the land that has been dead. He will just as certainly resurrect the dead. He is omnipotent. And in 3144 and 145, it says, God rewards those who are appreciative. And the appreciation doesn't just come in the aspect of the consumption of the food and the water and the drink, but it actually comes in the reflection that God created all this. In 695, it says, God is the one who causes the grains and the seeds to crack and germinate. He produces the living from the dead and the dead from the living, such as God. How could you deviate? To the point that you think about, you know, the, the fruit, the vegetable, the, um, the grains that you eat, that God created a mechanism in this dead piece of wood called a seed, that when you put it, place it into the soil and put water and sun and oxygen uh, and you know uh, the nutrients in the soil, that all of a sudden you get this this multitude of delicious fruits and vegetables and grains uh, that we produce all our foods from. And what an amazing mechanism! And it's an opportunity again to reflect upon that. Uh, think about the supply chain. Uh, that's in force. Everything from the uh, the farmers, the workers, the uh, the the cold transportation, uh, the cleanliness to basically clean the food, to uh, to package the food, to ship the food, uh, to put it inside a grocery store. These are all opportunities for us to just again to marvel at what a creation God has put for us. Uh, that we live in a time and a place where there's such abundance and such variety, uh, and such amazing you know tastes and uh, different. Uh, 
uh, ethnicities of food and all these different uh, attributes. But then also, uh, I mean, you think about how did the food get there. In 699, says, he is the one who sends down from the sky water whereby we produce all kinds of plants. We produce from the green material multitudes of complex grains, palm trees with hanging clusters in gardens of grapes, olives, and pomegranate, fruits that are similar yet dissimilar. Note the fruits as they grow and ripen. These are signs for people who believe. And in 6141, it says, He is the one who established gardens, trellis and untrellis, and palm trees and crops with different tastes in olives and pomegranate, fruits that are similar yet dissimilar, Eat from their fruits and give the due alms on the day of harvest. Do not waste anything. He does not love the wasters. And, uh, you know, in addition, obviously, to the fruits, the vegetables, to the uh, the drinks, there's the uh, meat, right? The delicious steak, the chicken, the, uh, you know, if you like bison or lamb. I mean, just such a variety. And uh, God produced all these for us. You know, all these different uh, flavors and tastes. Uh, for our benefit. And then in addition, the milk that these animals, you know, some of these animals produce. In 2321, it says, and the livestock should provide you with the lesson. We let you drink milk from their bellies. We derive other benefits from them and some of them you use for food. So that delicious steak you get to have when you break your fast, um, you know, inshallah, you'll be appreciative that much more during Ramadan, but then also uh, every other day out of the year, because you know what it's like uh, to not have that, to be uh, have that, uh, be refrained from your uh, diet. And in uh, 56, 63 through 74, it says, Have you noted the crops you reap? Did you grow them or did we? If we will, we can turn it into hay. Then you will lament. We lost. We are deprived. Have you noted the water you drink? Did you send it down from the clouds or did we? If we will, we can make it salty. You'd be, you should be thankful. Have you noted the fire you ignite? Did you initiate its tree or did we? We rendered it a reminder and a useful tool for the users. You shall glorify the name of your Lord the Great. You know, God created not only the uh, the livestock, uh, but the plants, but then also the uh, the harnessed energy uh, to cook these foods. Because, you know, when we cook them, not only do we get more calories from the foods, but they actually taste better in many occasions, especially when we're dealing with, uh, with the meats. <laughs> so, you know, all this, again, it's, it shows us that we, we remember God, we're appreciative of God, we're conscious of our day. And then in addition, it makes us conscious of other people. And what a blessing it is to have food, to have provisions. And uh, this is a way to encourage us to give to charity, uh, to help out the needy, to give uh, to those who are poor, who can't afford, who might not be able to have the same delicious foods that we might be able to have. Uh, God tells us in 76.8, and it's a characteristic of the believers, it says, they donate their favorite food to the poor, the orphan, and the captive. And how awesome is that? Not just any food, their favorite food. And look at the categories, the poor, the orphan, and even the captive, right? These are the people that are considered the bottom of society. And God is telling us that as believers, we give our favorite food. You think of that favorite dish you have to be able to prepare it and give it to someone of need. And God continuously throughout the Quran encourages us to, to, to give to charity, uh, to help the poor, help the needy, help the traveling alien. Uh, you know, those who are less uh, off than the, than the rest of us. And um, when we do that, you know, God rewards us, again, both physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, um, and God provides us with more. And it's more of a reason to be appreciative, and it's more of a reason to remember God. And you see the cycle just continues and continues. It's a, a positive feedback loop where the end result is our happiness is continuously being improved. And in 2-3, this is chapter 2, verse 3. It's one of the first attributes of the righteous that's described in the Quran. It says, Who believe in the unseen, observe the contact prayer salat, and from our provisions to them, they give to charity. So when we give to charity, I mean, it's showing that we basically, it's a, the most altruistic act, that we realize that when we give to someone else, it's actually for our own benefit in a strange way, because we realize that we become that much more appreciative of what we have. We become that much more appreciative of what God has given us. And um, by being able to share that experience with other people, it's going to make us better people and uh, live much happier, richer lives. And this takes us to the last point I wanted to make as far as one of the, the, the biggest kind of uh, uh, spiritual benefits of uh, fasting, uh, of Ramadan. It's self-control. And you think about how much 
times, you know, people, they fall, fall short in life from achieving their goals, achieving, you know, uh, greatness, achieving all their, uh, uh, everything they want in life is because they lack self-control. Now, I guarantee you, anyone who can refrain from food and drink to the point that they're saying, irrespective if the days are short or the days are long, depending on what day uh, of the year Ramadan falls under, um, that they will continue to tell their body that they are in control and they are not, the body is not going to eat or drink because the, uh, the soul, the real person has made that directive. Uh, it shows true self-control. Now, one of the things is Ramadan shifts from the previous podcast we saw about 10 to 12 days each year. So in a span of about 30 to 36 years, you're going to cover the entire gamut of the short days and the long days of the year. And inshallah, we'll be able to fast through all that. And it shows our absolute devotion to God alone and our ability of having self-control. Because when we have self-control, all of a sudden, any other task in our day becomes that much easier. Uh, we talked about in the past the marshmallow experiment, being able to delay gratification, uh, and how this was uh, linked as one of the greatest attributes of success among students. Um, and it's this ability, this training, that when we reach that age where we can fast, uh, that we, you know, are mentally, physiologically uh, capable, that we're building this, this integrity in us, that we're saying we are able to exert self-control over the body, that the body might want certain things that we know are bad for it, that we can refrain. And by being able to do this, by practicing with Ramadan, with fasting, we realize that this gives us absolute self-control over all the tasks, all the the, uh, the hurdles, the hardships that are in our life. Because we realize if we can refrain from eating and drinking, you know, one of the most basic necessities of our lives, all of a sudden achieving uh, other goals becomes that much more reachable. And God tells us in 769, says, remember God's blessings that you may succeed. So fasting, Ramadan, it's an absolute blessing. Is it difficult? Is it hard? Yes. But God says in the Quran, it says, uh, that he'll make it easy for us, uh, that anyone who picks the difficult path, that God will make it easy for them. And we have to trust in God that, yeah, that, that thought of not eating, not drinking for the entire day, uh, you know, getting up early to, uh, to hydrate and then, you know, uh, waiting until sunset to eat and drink, that it's difficult and it appears difficult. But the reality is that God puts it in us. God has designed us and God knows that we can handle it. And if we trust in God and we put our, uh, put our absolute faith in God, uh, that we'll be able to have control over our bodies. And this is going to, this is going to amplify in other aspects of our life. And uh, all in all, it's going to make us successful all around. So God willing, we're going to end there. Uh, if you guys got any comments or questions, hit us up at crontalk at gmail.com. Um, we also got our Quran study notes at crontstudy 19com And until next time, peace and God bless and have a amazing uh, Ramadan and enjoy it and really savor it because uh, it's going to do wonders for uh, all of us, both spiritually and physically. Peace and God bless.